there is a couple of more concepts that I want to bring in over here, right? Basically related to this problem of block schedules versus overlapped schedules. Okay. So I'll take this example, you know, the same old example, the ABC, the three uh, operations that we have been looking at so far, right? Once again, A has a total execution time of 40 time units, B has 20 and C has 10. Okay. Uh, you know, same iteration period bound of this is 40 plus 20 plus 10 divided by 2 is equal to 35, right? There are two loops over here, etc. All of that analysis we have done earlier. So if I say that I have two processors and I want to schedule it, what will it look like? I'll basically have P1, uh, you know, I could go ahead and put A1 onto P1 at time 0, start it off. And at the same time, because I have these two initial tokens over here, I can therefore execute both of these at time 0 itself, right? A1 and A2 can both start at time 0, right? But at time 40, when A1 and A2 both finish, I end up getting two tokens over here, but B requires a token on the AB edge as well as on the CB edge. On the CB edge, there is only one, right? So only B1 can execute, B2 cannot. Okay, so what happens when B1 executes? Fine, B1 executes, it takes 20 units of time. So up to this point is time 60. After that C1 executes and at time 70 it is over, right? This produces one more token over here, which will allow B2 to execute. Okay, B2 then takes 20 units of time. At time 90 I have B2 finishing and at time 100 C2 also finishes. Okay, so in other words, the latency for this entire block happening over here is 100 time units, right? Now, let me just continue this a little bit further, right? What will happen is I have a couple of choices. One is I can just take this entire schedule that I created, A1, A2, B1, C1, B2, C2, and say that this is a fully static schedule, okay? So what is the allocation? Allocation is basically these two processors, right, P1 and P2. Binding is basically given by each of these, right? A1, B1 and C1 go on to P1, A2, B2, C2 go on to P2. And schedule is given by the exact time instance, right? A2 at 0, B2 at 70, C2 at 90, etc. Right? This is the schedule. Okay. And then what I'm saying is this is now fully static. Right? I can just have some kind of a time counter which is keeping track of you know, counting from 0 to 100, right? Not 0, 1, 2, 3. And so it goes all the way up to 100. And exactly at time 40, it switches to B3, B4, etc. B3 at time, uh, you know, as 60 it goes to C3, at time 70 it goes to B4, time 90 it goes to C4, at time 100 once again it resets to 0. Okay, So this is a fully static schedule, right, can be implemented in the way that we have been looking at so far, right, you remember the entire folded architectures that we were looking at. Now of course the problem that you can see over here is it's wasteful, right, the latency is 100 but you know, ideally, I would have liked the time for finishing two iterations to be just 70 time units so that I can get to my average iteration period of 70 divided by 2 is 35. Right now, what I'm seeing is that two iterations finish within 100 time units. Therefore, average iteration period is 50. Okay. On the other hand, let's say that I, this is sort of like a self-timed approach. Right? Why am I saying this is sort of like a self-timed approach? Because basically what I'm saying is, as soon as C1 got over, I looked and saw that P1 was free, so I straight away started A3 on it. Right? And then B3, C3, and B A4, B4, etc. Everything now starts off as and when it is free. Okay? How do I take this forward? I can now go ahead and, you know, this block that I have, have in... Uh, 
blue for a3 a4 and uh, in, in green for a3 a4 and in blue for a5 a6 right which i have marked as basically this repeating block right i take that and now i say okay you know forget about the a1 a2 right that was some startup initial condition right let me take this pattern that i see for a5 b5 c5 a6 b6 c6 and see if i can now repeat that systematically and get a complete schedule okay in fact what i can do then is i could also say don't do this a2 over here start a2 here start at 30 so it will finish at 70 just in time for b2 so if i do something of that sort then essentially i'll see that you know even the a1 part of it could have been made a sort of periodic uh, the, the same shape okay so this repeating block that i have got right is essentially if i look at it it has a latency of 100 time units right but an initiation interval that is the time between repetitions of this entire block is only 70 okay which means that effectively every 70 time units two new iterations can complete okay so what that means is average iteration period is going to be equal to 35 is equal to the iteration period bound okay so what is the main difference that we have over here this is basically telling you something that you know this schedule that we have got over here this a3 b3 c3 a4 b4 c4 occupying 100 uh, cycles or 100 time units but with an initiation interval of 70 i'm calling it i'm going to call this an overlapped schedule right because this is basically a region of overlap in other words the blue part and the green part are overlapping in time okay before i have finished the iteration corresponding to a3 a4 right the iteration corresponding to a5 a6 has started the individual operations a3 a4 of course have completed before a5 and a6 but the iteration because essentially consists of a full round of all the operations right and there is this overlap over here that i uh, have to deal with okay now is this a problem maybe not because after all it is also a static schedule right i know ahead of time at which point in time each and every one of the operations needs to execute on which processor so by itself this is not an issue it's just that compared to a block schedule it is slightly harder to reason about in the sense that i do have this problem that you know there is an overlap between multiple iterations happening at the same time okay now the question is you know was a overlap schedule the only way by which i could have got to this iteration period bound of 70 because you know clearly what you can see over here is that if i stuck with a block schedule right if i stuck with this I could only get an average iteration period of 50 time units, not 35. Okay. The question is, could I have done something to improve that? Could I have made a better blocked schedule? Okay. In this particular case, the answer is yes. Okay. And how would I do it? One possible way would be yeah, that I do retiming. Okay. So what I have drawn over here, the squiggly line, the red line that I've drawn over here is basically a cut set. Okay. And what is it a cut set? Essentially this cut set is saying CA and AB are the ones, the edges to be cut. Okay. What happens when I cut those edges? I do a minus one delay over here and a plus one delay over here right depending on the direction that i have okay and as a result of doing that i will end up with one delay each on the ca and ab edges okay now let's go ahead and schedule right and i'm aiming for a block schedule at this point i'll go and put a1 on p1 and now the good thing is because the dependency between a1 and b1 has been broken after retiming I can now straight away go ahead and schedule B1 and C1. Okay. 
and the nice, nice thing is b1 and c1 finish quite fast they finish by 30 times uh, 30 time units and once b1 and c1 that is to say in particular once c1 has finished it produces a token on the ca edge right and it means that a2 can now be scheduled which means and similarly, you know, uh, while A2 is happening, as soon as A1 has completed, I, I can also go ahead and run B2 and C2, right? Now, I could also have put, uh, uh, no, I mean, B2, in fact, depends on A1, right? Uh, it now has a dependency that B2 depends on A1, so B2 could only run after A1 completes, but that's perfect, right? Effectively, what I have is, I now have a block schedule where the repeating block takes 70 time units. Okay, and as you can see over here, now the average iteration period is going to be equal to 70 divided by 2 or 35, which is equal to the IPB, right? So I did not need an overlap schedule. In some ways, a block schedule seems to be a little bit simpler in terms of implementation. I can do that and you know, it's done. I basically have a non-overlapped block schedule, which will give me the same as the iteration period bound. So what did I do over here? I basically applied this transformation of pre-timing in order to move some registers around that reduced the critical path and finally got me to this point where I can actually meet this target. Okay. Is it always possible? In general, you cannot guarantee something of this sort. No amount of retiming can guarantee that it can make the critical path such that it can actually meet your iteration period bound, right? In fact, if you look at it, the critical path by itself does not make the iteration period bound. It turns out that only when you also have parallelism, that is two uh, iterations of this running in parallel, you can fi finally get it to the point where it is a blocked schedule, which meets the time that you have. 